41 at one we point. carry on watching it afterwards. Yeah, they might. Really I don't know what, yeah. If they came in late, they might be still watching it. Yeah, let's pretend that. Yeah, there's about a thousand of them and they're yeah. still <laughs> <laughs> as it goes on. So lovely wallpaper, Corey. Really nice. Where are we? What room are we in? I'm, I'm just trying. This is the guest bedroom. I'm trying to use it? the room that Seamus wouldn't be barging in. <laughs> it's like that it's pink. Um, <laughs> that hasn't worked. He's still barging in. Is he? Oh, bless him. And Dan, I like what's going on in your background there. We've got a nice bit of art. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my housemate made me realise that it's hung up upside down. But I ain't bothered changing it because I like it. Great. it oh, I like it. <laughs> Hands up who likes it upside down. Um, <laughs> I, the artwork. I, do. <laughs> I can only offer you ABBA, I'm afraid. That, that's good enough for oh, me. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Sorry, sorry darling. <laughs> I've got about 17 books under the laptop, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get rid of the chin. <laughs> we never thought of having something in the background, did we? There's just us. We're happy <laughs> enough. Oh, hello. Lovely. Hello. Hi, we've got Brian and Kevin here. Hi, Brian and Kevin. Hello. Hello. I, I kind of want to see what the, the picture is behind you. What is? What have we got there? It's um, a Birmingham artist called Sue something. Something. We won it in a, in a raffle. We said, no, we didn't. We, oh, did we? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was for... Uh, um, no for arguments, people. boys. <laughs> yeah, it's a heart research. It's heart research. Yeah. It's on all hearts all over it. It's been there for years, so... <laughs> I love that we won it in a raffle. There was me thinking it was a very expensive piece. Look at Ruth running out the background then. Did anybody see? <laughs> I did. <laughs> did you see her do? She looked so put me on camera. She's been sitting on the floor watching the film. Is everybody's <laughs> pets all right? Because the fireworks are going off, aren't they? The Cats moment. around somewhere, yeah. <laughs> Bolting underneath furniture like, no, I don't know. Oh, oh. Raids well, again. Do we start? I don't know. We've got, I think Kate's just arrived. Or do we give it another five minutes? I never know what to do. Well, I need a wee, so... <laughs> oh, you go for a wee. It's really highbrow, isn't it, this? <laughs> 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 it's like the Oscars. Really, really highbrow. How do I get you all on my screen? I've never... I can't oh, okay, so you know at the top, this gallery view? Can you see that? Uh -huh. oh, top right. Top right. Gallery view, show thumbnails. Yeah. View, view, got you, gallery, there you are. Oh, it's like Celebrity Squares from the 80s. Isn't it fantastic? Yeah, I've just gone to gallery view. Look what Corey's just done, she's really that cool. Sound, that sounds <laughs> far too boring. That was a bit of that way. Whoa. <laughs> Dan, what have you got going on there? That's fantastic. Me, me. No, not, not Dan, Dan, the other Dan. No. Dan. <laughs> Hi, Dan. What? We've got some really cool freedom effect going on. What's that? Nice background. Black and brown stripes. I like it. It's really cool. It's really cool on here because you can travel around the whole world on this. Look, watch this look. Like a sudden <laughs> in. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, cat afraid of the fireworks. Hello, cat. That's better. Film, by the way, I really enjoyed it. Oh, good. Great, I'm glad, I'm glad. Um, so we've got, yeah, I do like that the fact that we, we were looking at your amazing backgrounds, Dan, and then suddenly a cat took over and everybody's attention shifted. <laughs> it was a lovely little feline. Hello, how are you? Good, thanks, yeah. <laughs> Good, so I think we, we can start. So um, I'm quite happy mm. because of the amount of people who are on here. If unless somebody's got anything booming in the background, like you DJs, you never know what you've got playing in the background. We can all be on if you want. Should we? Should we unmute and see what it's like? And if it's dreadful, we'll mute ourselves again. Should we give it a whirl? So everybody, let's have a quick unmute. No feedback. Any feedback? Uh -oh. <clears throat> Testing one two. <laughs> Any echoes? Any over echoes? No. I think we're all right. Do you? Yeah. I might even try without headphones. Should I try it without headphones? Oh, How about you've got, you're going wild tonight. Yeah, try it without <laughs> headphones. Hello, Dublin. Let me have your votes, please. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, I'm supposed to be introducing the film, which we've just watched, hopefully just seen. So it was 50 years, a celebration of the Nightingale Club that we all know and love. And the film was really to show what's happened over the, to relate to things like music, fashion, 
what was going on in society over the years and how it's affected the LGBTQIA plus C. So hopefully it did that and you can please chat, send us some questions or give us, let's do just do a proper wave and you can ask a question that way if you prefer. Otherwise chat's fine. Um, yeah, whichever way, whatever you prefer. So the first thing I'm going to do is if the people that are doing the Q&A as in the participants that were in the film, if we just say a quick hello, first name, um, our preferred pronoun and what, what we, how we're kind of attached to the Nightingale or why we were part of the film. So I'll start. My name's Nicola. I was the filmmaker in the film and the inter interviewer. Um, my pronoun is she, he, I was going to say she, he and her. I've messed it up already. <laughs> he or her. Oh. <laughs> and um, yeah, my link, I was, I think, the third female to be let, signed into the Nightingale Thorpe Street um, via a male guest. When I say third, that was after all the staff um, that got in there. But I think I was number three. But someone will probably push me out of that in the conversation a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. So that's me. So let's pass over. Who would who would like to go next? Corey. I'm Dan. Uh, my pronouns are, pronouns are he, him. And I'm the current um, event manager programmer of the Nightingale. I'll go next. I'm, I'm Corey. She and her is fine for me. Um, I've been a DJ, resident DJ at the Nightingale for decades now. I've seen it all, done it all, and um, enjoyed every minute of it. Um, hi everyone, I'm Why She Black, uh, and uh, my pronouns are she, she, he, no, she, any pronouns fine. <laughs> that, that's a cover all basis, anything's fine. Um, and I'm uh, a drag queen uh, at the village, at the village, <laughs> the Nightingale. Wrong, wrong place. Where am I? Uh, you need a drink. Oh, <laughs> oh don't have too many of them. <laughs> um, uh, and I, I do drag, <laughs> do drag at the Gale and host events and do the most with the least. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Who have we got next, Pete? I'm Peter. It says Peter down there, but I'm DJ Dolly. I just look like him. Look, uh, there you go. You know <laughs> now. I, you can call me whatever pronoun you like, because I don't even know what pronoun means, but I know I'm a he, him. So honestly, just call me what you like. I was a DJ at the Nightingale from 89 to about ooh, 98, and then I got carted off somewhere else, deviate. Um, and I came back again. So I've now done... I was saying to Corey, we've done a live set, or well, we've done a virtual set, which is coming up. You can tease that in a minute, Nicola. And I've now done five decades of the night ago. It's tiring, but it was absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Oh, another cat. Oh, another, another cat. cat. Where's no. mine? <laughs> it's grab your pet time, everybody. <laughs> you can grab your pet and pop it in your square. We're turning into something else this year. <laughs> Hilly. <laughs> yes. Um, yourself. I'm Hilly. Um, I worked at the Nightingale from '94 at um, Thorpe Street as a bartender, right the way through to Kent Street to 2001. Um, and pronoun, I've been trying to think of this all night, like the chocolate. That's my prompt, Hershey. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. Well, I think that is the, the, we have other people that are in the film that are here, like Anne and Kate. Um, and do you, want, do you want to just quickly tell us what, how you're associated with the Nightingale before we crack on? Um, I first went to the Nightingale in 1994, October. Uh, Bonsky Beak took me and I never looked back really. Um, I'm also a gay mom and I was very involved with Pride and I suppose in a sense my son was quite involved with Pride and Nightingale used to go and get things from um, so he had good experience of being in the gay crowd and he still goes now so that's how I sort of got involved and I know a few of you here like Corey and Tilly obviously from the, from the scene and, and from the gale yeah <laughs> and is that kate kate who was in the film is that the kate that's here or is this a different kate it's a different kate i believe so not not to worry so 
Um, if you can all just open your chat and make sure that's open. So it's at the bottom of the page. There's a little chat button. Click on that if you've got any, uh, any <laughs> a different Kate. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hi, different Kate. Um, if you can pop little, if you've got any questions or anything you want to say, pop it on there. Otherwise, just give us a wave and um, fire away. So to start with, the first thing I wanted to ask everybody um, that appeared in the film was, what were the biggest changes you saw? What was the one, if you could nail one thing that you've seen over the years of working or being part of the Nightingale, what was the one biggest change? Pete. White denim. No, to be, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, women. The welcome of women. It was so lovely when you first got there and you're in there in, as a frightened 17 year old going, <sighs> men everywhere, where's the women? No women. And then we were sneaking them in under the counter. We used to sign them in. The members were very hoity toity. They weren't allowed to buy a drink. They couldn't buy poppers. They had to leave with you. You had to wait for them outside the ladies while they used the toilet. Because I'm, I'm not lying, Amakori, I'm not lying. No, it was true. These things, and it wasn't until the kind of early, early 90s when things started mm. shuffling through. And when I saw you walk in, Corey, of your own accord, I was gobsmacked. I went, how's she getting here? <laughs> <laughs> she just got a mat and she, Did you break it? Are you the cleaner? It was just <laughs> unexpected and brilliant at the same time. Then we had a meeting about it, and we then opened the membership up, and it became a non-members club, if you like. And then the floodgates opened, and everyone came in. So that was that for me was the the tipping point, the catalyst. It was just fantastic to see girls, lesbians, every kind of girl dancing alongside the mates because you could bring your friends in at last, you know, yeah. your extra friends, you know, outside friends, not just your gay friends. Fantastic. Anybody else? I think one of the changes now is is that everybody's welcome to the Nightingale. It doesn't matter what you identify as now whether you identify as gay lesbian transgender bisexual it doesn't matter as long as you accept that people there might be different from you and enjoy the whole experience just come on in and have a great time and i guess that's what um educates people that's how we're educating that it's okay to be gay it's okay to be bisexual uh you don't have to you know, walk around. Girls just walk around. I'm here, but I'm straight. I'm here, but I'm straight. Doesn't matter anymore. Just enjoy yourself. Just have fun. Brilliant. Actually, just to add to that, I think it really opened it up sort of mid 90s when people started bringing their straight friends in. Yeah. A little bit on edge to start with, girls and boys, but mainly the boys, obviously. Don't touch me, don't touch me. I'm not. I'm not interested. <laughs> but it finally opened the doors and they left there thinking, well, the music was great, the girls looked great, but the lads were all right with me, and I had a dance and nobody took the piss. So it yeah. kind of opened the doors to the rest of society and made it the melting pot that we've got now. It's great. I think it was interesting, like, the different things that have happened in society and the battles that have happened that the Nightingale's been there for and like the different things that we fight for now like obviously like our trans siblings like really need our help at the moment and like Black Lives Matter and everything it said that going watching the different generations talk it was interesting to see what was going in their what was going on in their life and how that's changed throughout the time that the Nightingale's been there that was really interesting that's for, me, point. Sorry. Yeah. For, for me, when I, I moved to Birmingham from London in 1989, and it was really interesting that in London, the scenes were very separate. It was women and it was men, and you weren't allowed to talk to each other. And when I came to Birmingham, it was such a shock that apart from the Nightingale, men and women actually spoke to each other and got on and seemed to <laughs> like each other. And then when the Nightingale caught up with that, it was so much freer than London. I think Birmingham was way ahead of London back then. Can I just give a little um, anecdote? The, I was on switchboard in the mid 80s and um, used to, um, a switchboard was in an office um, above the, um, the Gale in Thorpe Street. And um, uh, one of my friends was on with me and um, um, she'd, had a, she'd had to take a really bad phone call and we said, oh, should I try and get you into the club? because it was so difficult. Um, uh, you know, she just wanted to decompress. 
um, and have a have a quiet word, uh, which we did in the office first. But then she just wanted to, um, to to have it was it was awful. I had to sign her in, um, and she'd been working for for Switchboard at the same time. You know, it's it, it's it was bonkers. So I'm so glad that it changed eventually. Yeah. But it took some time and some doing. With I can remember a lot of the um, arguments that they had. I'm so glad we've got somebody who was from the, the gay switchboard because it was such a big part of the Nightingale being in the same premises and everything. I'm glad but you're Very here. much so. so I, I worked at Thorpe Street and I had no idea that the switchboard was there. Yes. Yeah, they were kept yeah, the next thing. door. There was a little door next door um, and you just um, sort of um, <laughs> scuttled in and it, you had to go up all the stairs, which I don't know if I'd manage these days, but <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you went upstairs and you could hear the music sometimes. Um, it closed, um, uh, switchboard finished a little bit before the music was ramped up. So I think it was seven till 10. Uh, so, uh, quick, quick question. Uh, I remember, Stealing my mum and dad's gin out of the cupboard. I'd grab it, I'd sip a load of it, I'd fill it up with water, run down the hill, jump on the 37 bus, almost wet myself the whole way because I should have probably gone to the loo before I left, but I was so excited. I'd get on the 37 bus, I'd drink then 2020, whatever I got in my bag that my friend had got from the shop earlier, drink that on the bus, get to the gale, get signed in, and uh, it was the most thrilling experience. There'd be Corey DJing, everybody fancied her. There'd be Hilly on the bar, everybody fancied her. <laughs> Kate Hilly on the lights, everybody fancied her. I'm talking from the girls' perspective here. We'd be in there going, hey, we can't believe we're in here, and my God, we've got Charlie's Angels. Literally. <laughs> that was my experience. I was I'm young, I was young. But how, how, did, how did you all feel what, what was your experience of going there like the first time, the first, second, third time when you were just sort of, oh my God, this is something different and brilliant. I think, I think for me was when I went in um, and I, I came in obviously with Bronski Bay, but then you had the little restaurant on the side, you had the other bar, you had the stairs going up. It's when you opened the doors and you heard that music and you felt that pump, pump, pump music, and it just sort of just go, went in your veins, all over your body. It was just fantastic, and it was like, oh my god, this is absolutely brilliant. I abs I've never known anything like it, and I didn't even know it existed. I didn't know the gal. I didn't know any of the any of the pubs or the clubs, nothing. And it was just so exciting. And I thought, I've got to be part of this. And any excuse it was, I've got to get in. And we got to know some members and they was really lovely and they just got us signed in. And like Pete said, sort of you hovered around, the, around them. And this was back in 84 and it was just amazing. And I've never looked back. I just felt I, felt I belonged there. Even though I didn't even know at the time I was gay, I just knew I belonged there. And, and, and for me, that was just amazing. And everybody was just fab. <laughs> I think Phil touched on it in the film about hovering around, you were saying, Anne, and you'd be at the end of the street mm -hmm. waiting with the friends, or you'd go up in a group, yeah, knock yeah. on the door, you'd get Dave door a door, come out with his tiny pencil moustache, lean around like a carry on character and go, what are you? <laughs> and then and you'd, you'd say, where have you been? You'd say, the jester or partners, have you now? I said, well, what do you want? The second verse of Over the Rainbow. And then eventually you'd think, yeah, he's gay. And he'd let you in. But it was, I used to go early on a Friday evening because I had no idea it was a nightclub. I thought it was a bar. And it was always empty. And as I was leaving once, about six weeks I did this, and I thought, well, nobody comes here. They were all in the bars, weren't they? And I didn't know. And he said, give it half an hour. Yeah. They were all there. And yeah, it was a music thing because the music, I used to stand behind the DJ, uh, Tony Rouse. He used to do High Energy on Fridays, I think. And it was music I'd never heard before from Spain, Italy, a lot of high energy from Germany or Europe, not anything from the charts at that point. And it was fascinating. And that's when I thought, I don't like clubs. I think I might give this DJ thing a go. I'll, I'll give it a whirl. And the rest, well, you know. But yeah, it was terrifying to start with. You'd hide. I used to keep my coat on just in case there was a police raid. So I didn't have to go to the cloakroom. I mean, that's the kind of, I've still got that mentality. It's ridiculous. Even now, I'll hold my boyfriend's hand crossing the road and stop and look in case anyone's, I've got 1984 head still. 
And I <laughs> wish I could get it out of my head, but it's all right in most places now. Yeah. Well, hate crime keeps on rising. It's still for, for the community, unfortunately, it's not going down. And, you know, I think that's why we do need these spaces for people to come, at, come and come out to, but also that are already out and can go and be safe somewhere because, you know, nothing is falling as far as figures in, as far as that's concerned. Um, do you think um, people still have that um, feeling, you know, when they go to the Nightingale now? Because the, everything's changed in society. Things are a little bit more accepted in some areas. Hate crime's still there and rising. But do you think people, that excitement that we had, do you think that's still, young people are still running down to the club on the 37 bus and all that business during 2020? Do you think that's still there? Definitely. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree, yeah. It's, um, it's just a community. It's just really a community. Like, the difference from me not working there, so like before I did drag, uh, to now, I'm just sort of like, I just feel like one big family, and everyone just knows to go to the Gale. The absolute ruckus, do you know what I mean? Everyone knows. Mm. And like, even, I think, people who don't, who've never been to the Gale, or it's like their first time, it's that another, they all know the, about the gay scene. Like, yeah, we're gonna go to the Gale afterwards. Where are we gonna end up? Ask anyone in the Gale. Uh, so there is still that like hype energy. The the kids are just younger and have worse music taste. But you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it's funny with, when I'm at work now, or even when I'm talking to relatives and they'll say, we're going Nightingales at the weekend. They always put an S on the end, I've no idea why. And um, yeah. they'll tell me about it. And they, have you heard of Nightingales? I'm like, yeah. yeah. Oh, my, my niece said, I've been to the Gale. Uh, is it any good? I, I went to the Gale last week and it was quite good. Have you been there before? And I went about 958 times. <laughs> Four days a week for most of the 90s. But they don't realise. And then when you say, well, I've worked there. And then they go, ah, we look a bit old. Because, of course, you know, we're all <laughs> And I want to go back there. When it reopens, I really want to go back and have a little nosy round. Because I don't know. I just haven't been there really in the longest time. And I know it's radically different, but I'd like an invite, please. I think we need, Dan, yeah. we need events manager extraordinaire. We Dan, need the Nightingale Fifty Night where we can all come back. Yeah, all at yeah some, definitely. Some of us with our Zimmer frames. I'll bring, hide about the 2020 in my pocket like I used to. <laughs> and, uh, and we should have a I'll read. I'll do you an hour. I'll do you a DJ, free, gratis. On the opening night when we get out of this COVID nonsense and I'll do you an hour of nonsense. Great. Marvellous. Perfect. Perfect. The, yes. prob the problem is now because a lot of students do go to the Nightingale um, and thanks to Dan, it's become a trendy place. Uh, the artwork around the place isn't necessarily what you'd expect in a gay club. It's more what you'd expect in Digbeth. So it's very, very young, fresh, artistic. And a lot of older people are kind of scared of it now um, because it doesn't look like a gay club anymore. It's not dark, you know, the door's big. It's supposed to be a tiny little door with a little hatch. So I, I think a lot of older people, my peers, um, are frightened to go. And obviously you go into a club and there are young people and everybody, all the time I see old faces and they're like, oh, I feel really old in here. Well. It doesn't matter. Just enjoy it. It's still the Nightingale. It's still part of you. Don't. It, it's only you that's worrying about it. Nobody else cares what age you are. Just come in and have a good time. And, and we need to try and break down the walls that people are scared to go to the Nightingale. Although it, it's their patronage over the years that has has built it to where it is. Just come and enjoy yourself. And, and when we're at full throttle, there's four rooms open, five including the garden. There's somewhere that you'll find your space where you want to be. So just come along. Don't be scared about it. It's not what it used to be. That drives me mad when people yeah. say it's not what it used to be because nothing's what it used to be. And the biggest change is probably in your head. Yeah. I, I, I went when I was a student and I, I loved my Thursday nights. I felt Thursday nights was my Saturday night. You had that feel over it all over again, just how it used to be. As you know, Corey, I'll just dance anyway, whenever I am. But, you know, and I don't care what age. I, if I'll, I'll probably have a Zimmer frame, you know, to go to the club. <laughs> But I haven't, I haven't been because the way I work, <laughs> because the way I work, I've worked a lot of night shifts and that, and I have really missed going to the club. 
really missed it and my friends don't normally go but I'll just go talk to anybody anyway but it's just I don't know I just I just love it it's just it's just part of the part of us isn't it but maybe we do need us. that invite because we do I mean I've been working a lot with the LGBT 50 plus community just trying to work out trying to make sure people keep visible and this, mm. the Nightingale is, is the perfect place to, if there was maybe a night where people were invited in, as in, if you used to come to the Nightingale, it's evolved and you can come and evolve, evolve with it. Like you have, Corey, you say that it keeps you young, you know, we le we've learned so much about our community from keep, keep going out because you meet different people and mm. like they say at the Gale, you know, it, it's all about the staff there. If Black Lives Matters is something they're campaigning about at the moment, the rest of the, everybody in the Nightingale knows about it, and that's what they'll focus on. We need a night where we're invited so everyone can come along, rejoin the party, feel accepted and feel okay, and then from then on, people will probably still, you know, will start to come go back again. But it's that fear, I think, of feeling old, or are people going to look at me thinking I'm picking up my kid? You know, when actually I've just come to have a good night, you know, a nice night out. Yeah. Maybe we need something just to sort of bridge the gap a little bit. A bridge the gap night, I don't know. We'll re relaunch Class of 96 then. We'll get that one going again. Come on, let's have that. Let's yeah. have that. So, the, the, um, yes, with your lovely... I'm, I'm just wondering if there's anything quirky these days like Sandra on the uh, piano um, you know how does it how do, exactly you know how does it work that that was that was just absolutely um, it's great for people who don't know yeah um, on the middle floor there used to be Sandra on her piano and yeah, she yeah. would play the piano a bit like Les Dawson at times depending on mm -hmm. how much she'd had to drink and um, she was absolutely fabulous um, and it, it, it just made for a very, you could dance downstairs and upstairs, but in the middle, there was this, this middle that, that was just bizarre and it was just absolutely amazing. And it gave, the, to, to us, it gave the, the Nightingale a lot of character. Sandra used to have a friend that turned the pages for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Identical. Twin yeah. Her name was Jill. Yeah. Her name well, Oh, Sandra and Jill. Jill. Yeah, Jill. Jill yeah. The name. Yeah, Dan, yeah. you need to be taking notes here, sweet. I know. This, this I know. is golden. This is golden. Now, I've got a quick question from Kate. Um, Kate, different Kate, we like to call it, because it's not the Kate we thought it was. Um, Kate said she loved the film and she just wondered, what are the hopes or what are your hopes for the future of The Nightingale as it's such amaz an amazing history? What are, if, what are your hopes? Who'd like to have a little go at that one? I want it to live on. <laughs> I'm hoping that, you know, in, in the next 30 years or 40 years or 50 years, the Nightingale, I think David said it, David Nash said it good in the documentary. I don't think it matters where the venue is, as long as the sort of brand of the Nightingale is still there. Because as different people have said, you know straight away, what it is, do you know what I mean? It's that sort of community, family-esque sort of thing. So it's just, I hope that, you know, in 40 years time, it's still going and it's still progressing. I second that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit concerned, obviously, with the whole COVID thing and everything dying off and money not being around and people not being able to get there. And I know it will survive in some form or another, but with all the building work that's going on around there, it just feels like it's almost time for it to move again. Yeah, maybe even downsize a little because it's vast that club. It, it, it is, it yeah. is problems that not problems, but like we said, with society progressing and stuff like that, it actually comes to a point where, like you said, people become more society become more open minded. So I think it was sort of my generation, mine, me and Waishi, like we've been friends since we were like 16, 17. Um, so we'd go out, but we wouldn't just go to the queer clubs. Do you know what I mean? And that's, that was a big thing that we had to deal with, was well, making sure that it, it fit in with society and it grew with it. Do you know what I mean? Why is she? Uh, that reminds me of something that um, didn't quite make the edit, which I, was, I really love to hear about. And it was the fact that you've, you've set up a certain night 
where people can come on and perform and they can actually win a, quite a substantial financial prize. <laughs> we also interviewed somebody who won that prize, who'd come yeah. from a country where he had to kind of escape because there was extreme homophobia, came over to the Nightingale. Can you, can you tell the story of, uh, of what happened there? Because it's, it's a cracker. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so um, I host a lip sync competition um, and eats are at the village and then the grand finale is at the Nightingale um, and it's called the church, the church of Waishu um, and it just, it, it's a combination of about six, six to twelve weeks of performers for drag artists, drag kings, drag things um, to just have a space to perform and then they could win a thousand pounds at the end of it. Uh, and the finale at the Gale packed out 300 people. We have guest judges, uh, we have performances, and the winner of last year's Black Pepper, who was uh, in the video, uh, it came from the Caribbean. And he was really, they were really new to uh, drag, also new to Birmingham. Uh, and so everything was sort of like a culture shock, a culture shift as well but he was embraced and like I love Black Pepper and I feel like I'm welcoming and everybody at the Gale is welcoming, everyone at the village is welcoming so it really helped them uh, not only feel comfortable where they are, express their drag and absolutely kill it on the finale like there's videos somewhere I'll have to show you but they like, absolutely smashed it uh, and they'd only been doing drag for about six months and probably on top of that, been in the country, God knows how long. Um, so I am really proud of not only them, I'm proud of the community and I'm proud that I'm able to have that piece of sort of like legacy um, when it comes to drag, when it comes to performance, when it comes to having people to share their, to have a space. I see the Gale as sort of, it's just where my art can breathe, do you know what I mean? And other people in the community can breathe. I know like sometimes, it's not open on like a Monday to Wednesday and I'm like, we could go in and like rehearse things and stuff like that and we go in and use the space. And David's always like, yeah, sure, if you need to use the space, that's perfectly fine. Because it, it keeps bringing new artists and new ways for me to thrive and I can give back to the community in other ways. So Miguel is not just a club for me, um, it's just like a really great source of my art and it, it really keeps me going because if anyone knows about arts in the city, um, space is very limited uh, and very hard to get uh, and especially free space, very hard to get as well. <laughs> we'll put that out there. Um, so having that uh, space as the Gale in the heart of Gay Village, at the heart of the community is such uh, an amazing thing to have and space to have and so like I'm proud to keep it going on like Dan said it wants to be around 40 years and plus I'm like I think it will be so I think the people who are around it now will take on that um the... and I, think you're, I think you're describing perfectly the what um the question from Kate was you know what is the future for the Nightingale and I think that is something massive. I, I don't remember that so much happening in the past. I think there used to be like Mr. Gay UK and there used to be strip -a -thon type things. And, you know, but this is like, this is different. You know, this is where it's evolved and it's giving opportunity to people from all over the world that are coming over here and being able to do stuff like this. So um, it's, I think that's brilliant. And, and that's obviously that how it's changed and moving forward. Um, Hill, I wanted to ask you because you rem I, when we were talking, you've got a few um, stories about different characters that used to go there, and I'm sure it's you who said something about someone who used to line up teddies or something. <laughs> Do you remember that? Was that you, Pete? A man that used to. <laughs> what was it you, Corey? <laughs> yeah, I can't remember his name, but yeah, because I was a DJ on Stripper Nights. Do you remember him, Pete? I remember uh, Oliver in the street. Oliver, Oliver, that's it. Right. Oliver. Oh, yes. oh, and Oliver and David, yes, of course. Okay, everybody's going Oliver, Oliver, great. Oliver. <laughs> he got a shopping bag full of stripper pictures and he'd stand right near the stripper and he'd help him collect his clothes at the end and go in and give them back to him. He was a very excitable, almost like a 
childlike, almost schoolboy-like, wasn't he? But he was about 20 foot tall and ginormous. And then, he, then he got a boyfriend who looked identical in a string vest and shorts again. He was always in the same thing, whatever the weather. And these characters just formed such a fascinating. It was I, I, to be the same. I, I, so I remember um, at a member's um, mm. uh, afternoon once, and he sat on the chair and it just broke. And I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all just went. <laughs> Hey, apparently, um, did Paul say he died or David? One of them died. Um, one of our friends still keeps in touch with them. They moved to, I have no idea. I don't think he ever got a, um, the idea that he was no longer a member of the Gale because when it all collapsed, he just couldn't um, understand that he wasn't a member um, like he used to be. Uh, but they moved to somewhere down south um probably coventry um and um one of our friends still keeps in touch with him and said that he died um one of them i can't remember which oh that's a shame that's mm. a sad story there, a lot. there was somebody right when we were filming somebody just told this story it didn't make the cut i was hoping it got in there but i wasn't the editor so not a sore point it's a good point but i wasn't the editor so so they said that he used to lay out something and he used to line up these teddies while the stripper was on. Does anybody remember this story? Have I made this up? <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was maybe it was Kate. <laughs> maybe it was Kate. Teddy. Yeah, some chap used to he'd, he'd have a teddy bear's picnic while the stripper was on. Yeah, it was Oliver. He'd come in and his um, oh, that was also Oliver. In his little shorts with his little strings. Oh, they weren't and little. They, they weren't little. They were. They were like huge. My yeah. Mm. He'd have a little teddy bear's picnic. Um, he'd bring in a bag of teddy bears and a picnic blanket, and he'd put it up. Um, there was sort of a, a platform be between the dance floor and the stage. He'd set up his little picnic area there and sit cross-legged. And he was a massive fella, mm -hmm. um, all excited about the stripper, and he'd be picking up his teddy bears to show the stripper. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was. And you'd get people a little bit taking the mickey, but then you'd just say, it's their safe space. Where else have yeah. they got to go? Yeah, to yeah. Why, why, can't they, why can't they do that? It was great. Good on Never you. Anybody. Don't touch the strippers. Thank you. <laughs> I think we should all do it after COVID. We should all go in with our teddy bears and have a teddy bears picnic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Wearing like the shorts. <laughs> Now, Ruth Middleton has put to everybody, it's good to hear about the girls supporting and being involved in Black Lives Matter. One of the things I liked about Brum in the years we were all, we, uh, in my years, there were all links to voluntary groups and charities. Switchboard used to be in the little office in the same building in Thorpe Street, which we know is correct. So funny, you could hear the music, etc., while talking to all the people who used to phone up. I bet it was quite a nice sort of disco feel then, was it, in the offices with all that going on below you? Uh, you had to, you had to deal with very difficult calls, that was the problem. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Could you answer that just one more time? Sorry. We had a bit of feedback. Oh, so, yeah, I, I was just going to say, it depended a lot on what people were talking to you about. If they were talking to you about all sorts of problems and things, sometimes you'd have very inappropriate music sort of blaring out. But yeah, it was, it was good fun. And it, if you'd got a quiet night, it was good to keep you awake. So, and we used to get free admission um, if you were sort of working that night at Switchboard, so, uh, which we lost when, we, when it moved to uh, back down into the village. But yeah, it was good I bet, days. I bet you were gutted then when it moved. It was like, oh... <laughs> Cause no, because we actually had an office, we moved to somewhere that we had an office that you could sort of swing a cat in. The offices that Switchboard and Friend had in Tharp Street were absolutely tiny. Were they? Right. Yeah. So I did, in the film, the two things I've written down, I couldn't help write these two things down, but one was formation disco dancing. That's got to come back, hasn't it? That was at the <laughs> That'll be Dolly. That'll be Dolly. <laughs> I've only got to put Boys Town Gang on and they just line up. Is that right? <laughs> That's right, boys. If I, yeah, if you get people of a certain age in over 35, they will just automatically line up. The last time I remember seeing that was Wigfield and people just yeah, line up. Yes. Don't know what makes them do it. It's like being in Toro Molinos. People just, they just automatically. And it's great because you think this one, could go on forever. The new one is Candy 
by Cameo. They they still do it. Really? They still love a love a lineup, love a a, a dance. Candy by Ca Cameo. That's the one there. Yeah. So this is still happening then. So that's yeah. good. And yeah. the Nightingale Punch sounded l loaded. Did anybody survive that? The Nightingale no. Punch. Everybody shaking their head. I don't drink, and I remember it tasted of purely juice. There was so much alcohol, it cancelled itself out. And I, I had a fight. I don't fight. I don't drink. And I remember being carted out of there and being left outside the Hippodrome. And it was it was a members' party night. And I mean, God knows what went on at the members' party night. I'm just going to draw a, dis a discreet veil across that because <laughs> it can happen now. <laughs> Now, has anybody got any further questions um, that they would like to ask on chat or pop their hand up? Is there anything else anybody would like to ask? I just want to ask mainly Dan as the um, the, the driving artistic force of, of the club at the moment and a brilliant job you do as well, Dan. Thank what you. exciting things have you got coming up? Well, <laughs> to be honest, like... <laughs> it, it, we've been like planning week by week at the moment with the whole COVID situation because you just didn't know whether Boris was going to pop up and be like, you're closed tomorrow, do you know what I mean? So we haven't got much planned for the future. But I think it's just ideally um, just making sure that we are that still that big force in the LGBTQ community and just being there for the people. That's the main thing. It's, it's realising that like, I think we've realised it again, this generation, um, like you all would have as well, and, and you've said about it, is that it is just a lot more than a club. Do you know what I mean? It is this space for people. And, you know, we have to help people with their art, with their mental health, you know, that sort of thing. We do stuff now, like we fund the circle, which is like a sober space um, on like a Sunday evening. Um, so. Do you know what I mean? I think it's just planning to how, how much more we can do and to tr strive to be truly like equal there. Do you know what I mean? Like make sure we are doing equality properly. Um, so one thing you say about equality that I'd just like to point out and why she is very much a part of this as well is, is the house of the church of why she um, you've had female drag queen winners as well and you've really embraced that drag isn't just about men dressing up as women yeah. it's about whoever you are dressing up as whatever you want to be as long as it's fabulous and artistic and I think both Dan and why she need a round of applause for including oh, people you. that maybe in other cities in the country you sure as hell wouldn't get that I know that there's still a lot of bias about female drag queens but at the Nightingale we we embrace it, it it's brilliant. Yeah, we're, we're, I love the fact that when you go, go to the Nightingale now and you go on the stage, you look at the stage and everyone is like completely different on the stage, you know what I mean, in a good way, all different sizes, colours, everything. Um, yeah. And I think that's, like I said, like striving to make sure that we continue that and we actually support these people, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So we're going to end in, in, a, in a minute. Thank you so much. That was a brilliant kind of ending wrap up. Hill's got a hand up. Let's see yeah. what you say. I just want to know, do they still do like the staff shows? <laughs> the this kind of one of those things. things that the entire gay scene used to do. So uh, partners would have its staff show um, and all the other venues, they'd all do the staff show, even us at the Fox. Um, they yeah. still do ours <laughs> now. And I just wondered whether they still did it at the, at the Nightingale, because I remember being part of many a staff show. The don't, but we, it's weird actually that you said that because we have so, sort of spoke about bringing it back um, because it just sounded so fun, like I've never, I've never seen it, but I remember when I worked at Missing and that, because they still do their staff shows, I think Missing do, I remember being involved in one of them and we were talking about it the other day and we were like, we should bring it back, it looks fun. We were thinking about maybe doing one at Christmas if we're open, but yeah, we were thinking maybe doing one then, so... We'll have to keep a look out, see if we do. I don't know whether you have enough time before Christmas because when, when, when they're complete amateurs, like those bar staff, <laughs> <laughs> you need a little bit more rehearsal than you have than the professionals that way she and that. <laughs> That's all part of the fun though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so can we can we finish on? Um if you are on the chat, if you could sum up your nightingale experience or what, what your thoughts about the nightingale. 
as Corey said in the film, she, she who should be obeyed, um, so people have referred to the Nightingale as that. If you could sum up your experience in one word or two words, because sometimes one's not enough, either put your hand up and say it or pop it on the chat and we'll finish on that if that's okay for everybody else. Okay, all right, put your hand up if you're ready or pop it on the chat. Oh, I've got yeah. One dollar. Okay. Um. Right, just waiting for anybody to pop on the chat. <laughs> okay, so we've got Iconic yeah. from Dan. <laughs> Gertie Swish from Brian <laughs> and Kevin. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, let's go round, Corey. Where I, I met my, yeah. where I met my wife. Okay, oh. I'll go delicious. <laughs> Dan, we've got you. Why is she? Dad stole my word. I'm <laughs> furious. <laughs> Sorry. So, so, um, just community for me. It's community. Pete? DJ Dolly? Have you home. done Home, I said. Home. Oh, it felt like home. Friends, family. It was like walking into one big house. And my life began. Simple. Oh. <laughs> I can't see your name. Is it L I D L? Little. Yeah, that's not my yeah. real name. Um, oh, okay. What's your word or words? Well, I just put eternity and poppers because that's how I remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> just popped up. Perfect. Perfect. Hill? I'm going to say empowering because I think it empowered us as individuals back then and I think it's probably still empowering people nowadays too. Perfect. Really good. Dan? Not Dan Dan, the other Dan. <laughs> Dan with the rainbow fabulousness. Just a bit mental or mental house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anybody else or are we done? I think we're done. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for watching the film. Participants, everybody's been brilliant. Thank you. And um, long may she go on, The Nightingale. Um, next is the lovely dream boat set by the lovely DJ Dolly and DJ Corey. So log into that, have a few drinks, have a disco, and have a, a fantastic, fabulous night. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody.